Imagine a being so powerful it can suck in entire galaxies, so mysterious it's invisible to the naked eye, and so impressive it bends the very fabric of space and time to its will. Yes, meet my mother. Nah, just kidding. Actually, meet the ultimate superhero of the universe, the black hole star. What is it and how does it work? Well, let's find out. The universe is full of marvels, and the black hole star is one of the most impressive ones. It's a supermassive force that can bend the laws of physics and a true enigma for scientists to unravel. No wonder science fiction writers find them so captivating. A black hole star, also known as a quasi-star, is a hypothetical type of extremely massive and luminous star that may have existed early in the history of the galaxy. They're predicted to be as luminous as a small galaxy. But unlike modern stars, they weren't powered by nuclear fusion in their cores. A quasi-star's energy would come from material falling into a black hole at its core. And yes, just like a normal black hole, these stars have the power to suck in anything and everything that gets too close, including stars, dust, and even entire galaxies. But how is it possible that the star is born from a black hole? And what's more, how do they continue to coexist together? Well, first let's discuss how black holes are born in general. It all starts with a supermassive star, one that is at least a few times more massive than our own sun. This giant of a star burns bright and hot, shining with the light of a million suns. But eventually, it runs out of fuel and its fate is sealed. As its lifespan comes to an end, it makes one final massive boom. A blast so powerful it can outshine an entire galaxy. This blast is called supernova. During this boom, the outer layers of the star fly away, while the core gets squished together by its own gravity. If the squished core is heavy enough, it can keep squishing until it becomes a black hole. And just like that, a black hole is born. Don't even try to put diapers on this thing. Now, this cosmic monster baby can continue to grow by swallowing up anything that comes too close, including stars, dust, and even entire galaxies. This is basically what's happening now in our universe with supermassive stars. But what about quasi-stars? The formation of a quasi-star could only happen early in the development of the universe, before hydrogen and helium were contaminated by heavier elements. And because of that, quasi-stars have one important feature. They are gigantic, so enormous, that it's literally impossible to imagine. They may have been dwarfing even the largest known modern stars, like V.Y. Canis Majoris and Stevenson 218. No wonder they're so scary. They were born from protostars, one of the first stars in the universe. The great-great-grandfathers of, you know, everything. So now, imagine a protostar so massive that its core collapses into a black hole, just like we described before. But the key difference is that in a regular supernova, the outer layers of the star are blown away by the energy released during the boom. Meanwhile, in a quasi-star, these outer layers are massive enough to absorb the energy without being blown away. What do we get in the end? A star with a black hole in its core that weighs from 1,000 to 10,000 solar masses. This quasi-star is about 14,000 times bigger than our Sun, which makes them bigger than any star we know today. These celestial titans have some pretty crazy properties. Once a black hole is formed at the center of a giant protostar, it starts to give off a ton of energy. This energy helps to balance out the force of gravity, making it kind of a giant fusion-based star. They would be so bright that each one would look like a small galaxy. Quasi-stars would have a pretty short lifespan, around 7 million years. Just for comparison, our Sun is about 4.5 billion years old and it's only halfway through its lifetime. But either way, during this short period, the black hole at the center would grow to be about 1,000 to 10,000 times the size of our Sun. Quasi-stars are also thought to be super hot, with temperatures reaching over 17,500 degrees. But as a quasi-star gets older, it starts to cool down, and its outer layers become see-through. Eventually, it cools down to a temperature of 6,740 degrees. And at that point, it's curtains for the quasi-star. It can't survive at that temperature, so it just dissipates, 
leaving behind an intermediate mass black hole. Unfortunately, right now, there's no observational evidence for the existence of quasi-stars. This is because they're thought to have only existed a very, very long time ago. They may have been very massive population 3 stars, which are extremely rare and difficult to detect. It's also very unlikely that any of them would still exist today because of their super short lifespan – only 7 million years. So why do scientists believe that quasi-stars could have existed? Because they're looking for ways to explain how supermassive black holes formed so early in the history of the universe. They're found at the center of most galaxies. But how could these monsters have formed so quickly? After all, it takes a really long time for small black holes to grow into supermassive ones. This is where the idea of quasi-stars come in. These stars aren't just destructive forces of nature, they're like the black belts in the martial art of gravity. They can bend and twist anything to its will. That's why these stars, if they really existed, had to play a crucial role in the evolution of galaxies. They must have been instrumental in shaping the universe as we know it. So those intermediate-sized black holes that they left behind could eventually turn into supermassive black holes in the center of galaxies. But we're still yet to solve this cosmic mystery. Detection and study of black hole stars is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Only instead of a needle, it's an invisible and mysterious object. And instead of a haystack, it's the vast expanse of space. But with the help of some pretty cool technology and a lot of brain power, scientists are getting closer to uncovering the secrets of these celestial giants. Here are some things that can help us in this research. First of all, gravitational waves. They're like ripples in the fabric of space-time, caused by the movement of massive objects. Albert Einstein predicted them way back in the 20th century, but they were finally detected only in 2015. We caught them by observing the collision of two black holes. This discovery confirmed that black holes can merge and that they're a powerful source of gravitational waves. Scientists think that by studying these waves, they can learn more about how black holes form and grow. We can also try to detect quasi-stars by observing the effects of their gravity on nearby objects. It's like trying to spot a criminal by their fingerprints. For example, if a black hole is located near a star, scientists can observe the star's light being distorted as it's pulled toward the black hole. And, of course, we can use our technologies, such as X-ray, infrared, and radio telescopes. This allows us to study black holes in various ways and at different stages of their lives. In other words, scientists are working hard to uncover the secrets of these celestial giants. We develop new telescopes, search for primordial black holes, and try to understand the connection between black hole stars and dark matter. And we're making some pretty incredible discoveries, just like with gravitational waves. All these things will bring us closer to uncovering the secrets of quasi-stars. And when we find out the truth about them, it will become a new page in our scientific history. Hop on board! Hurry, we don't have much time. We're on a cosmic journey to find the biggest star in the universe. The first star we pass is our own sun. By far, not the biggest one out there, but it's still massive. You could fit one million Earths inside it. That means if you think of the sun like a basketball, Earth would be half the size of a pencil eraser. If we put all the planets on one side of a scale and the sun on the other, the planets wouldn't stand a chance. The sun makes up 99.9% .9 of all the mass in the entire solar system. Mass is basically how much stuff or matter something is made from. And it's what you can thank for stars shining. You see, the more matter in a star, the thicker and hotter its core becomes. This starts a chain of chemical reactions. Hydrogen atoms get smashed into each other to form helium, releasing an incredible amount of energy. That's the star's light and heat. So, bigger stars also equal brighter ones. But with all those reactions going on, this shortens a star's lifespan. When it starts to run out of fuel, the star will enter the giant phase. It'll expand and turn red. Which brings us back to the task at hand. The biggest star we'll find is likely to be on the edge of its life. Wow. 
Switching on our hyper light engines, we soon arrive at the Lumen 16 system. Here, we'll find one of the smallest stars out there, a brown dwarf. Small here means about the size of Jupiter, but they're small for stars. Brown dwarfs are also called failed stars because they don't have enough mass for those chemical reactions. That means they're not as bright, but they're super dense. All the matter in them is packed together so tightly, they weigh 80 times more than Jupiter, even being the same size. Huh, and if you think that's something, just look at a white dwarf, even more tightly packed. This one here is Sirius B. It's also about the size of Jupiter, but it'd weigh as much as the sun. It emits a dim white light. Once it runs out of gas, it'll turn red and cool down. Now let's fly closer to its giant neighbor, Sirius A. You easily see this star from Earth, no telescope needed. Twice heavier and more than one and a half times wider than our sun, it's the brightest star in our night sky. Now we fly 550 light years away from Earth to the constellation Cassiopeia. Almost a hundred years ago, a cosmic explosion happened here. It expanded the atmosphere of the star Gamma Cassiopeia and some gases were thrown into space. After that, it became the brightest star in the constellation. It's ten times wider than our sun. On to the famous North Star. Funny enough, different stars have had this title over the years, and more will take it in the future. That's because Earth's pole star changes every 26,000 years. Imagine our planet like a spinning top. The northern pole will shift around in a little circle, pointing at different stars to the true north. The current one is a supergiant 37 times wider and 5 times heavier than our sun. It's easy to find in the night sky. It's on the very tip of the Little Dipper's handle. Get ready now! We're setting off for the eye of the storm, the center of our Milky Way galaxy. To see the next star, we need to switch to infrared mode. This pistol star is hiding from us in space dust. In just 20 seconds, it emits as much light as our home star does in an entire year. And its size is jaw-dropping. It's 420 times wider than the sun. But it's still not the most luminous star known to humanity. That would be a blue supergiant in the constellation Triangulum. Meet B416. It's almost 10 million times brighter than the sun. But the brighter a star, the faster it burns up all its fuel and the shorter its life. Compared with a red dwarf that barely glows and burns fuel much more slowly, its life will be hundreds of thousands of times shorter. 3,400 light years from Earth, there's one of the rarest celestial bodies in the universe. It's a yellow hypergiant called Rho Cassiopeia. Among the countless stars in our galaxy, there are only a couple dozen of these. And even though this star is extremely far away from our planet, you can still see it in the sky without needing a telescope. That's because it's 300,000 times brighter than our sun. It also helps that the thing is 900 times wider than our home star, too. And its color tells us that its fuel reserves will last for a long time. When Rho Cassiopeia starts to turn red and expand, it'll be one of the biggest stars in the entire universe. Now, we move to the constellation Orion. The star is in our sights. Betelgeuse, one of the largest ones visible to the unaided eye. 700 times the size of our sun. If it took our star's place, its surface would touch the asteroid belt. That's between the orbits of Jupiter and Mars. It would engulf the four inner planets, Earth included. But this star has astronomers very excited. They predict Betelgeuse will explode in a fantastic celestial show in the next 10,000 years. It'll be the greatest astronomical event of all time because we'll be able to observe a supernova at a close but safe enough distance. The exploding star will shine as bright as a half moon. It'll be visible in the daytime sky for a year and at night for several more. Now we venture to stars that exceed the sun's width 1,000 times. Mu Cephei is a hypergiant boasting the title of the reddest known star. Its color tells us that the fuel gauge is getting closer and closer to empty. But it's still so big that it could hold a billion suns in it. 
and because of its mass, this star will eventually become a supernova or even a black hole. Let's take a trip of almost 4,000 light years from home. Here it is, a red supergiant called VY Canis Majoris. It's one of the biggest and brightest stars of the Milky Way. It could fit 3 billion suns. And even though it's so huge, this thing is surprisingly light, only 17 weights of the sun. In the context of celestial bodies, you could call this star an inflated balloon. In the next 100,000 years, VY Canis Majoris will explode in a hypernova. Gamma radiation will destroy all life in the local part of the universe. But this star is so far from our solar system that it wouldn't mean any harm to us. If we placed MY Cephei in the center of our solar system, it would bulge all the way out to Saturn's orbit. To remind you just how far away Saturn is, think of it this way. It takes the Sun's light eight minutes to reach Earth. To get to Saturn, it takes well over an hour. Compared to this massive star, the Sun is just a grain of sand. It's one of the most luminous and reddest stars in our universe. The bigger and redder the star, the closer it is to its end. So, we're not looking at just a titan of the universe, but also one of the oldest celestial bodies out there. The second biggest star in the universe is UI Scuti. It's about 1.5 billion miles wide, 16 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. This is a pulsating variable star. Its brightness changes about every two years. UI Scuti is a record breaker in fuel combustion per year. Scientists expect it to evolve back to hotter temperatures like a yellow giant. Our journey is coming to an end. Before us, we behold Stevenson 218. It takes 20,000 years for light from this star to reach Earth. It's hard not to see this red supergiant on our tiny terrestrial home. It's 2,150 times wider than our sun. We'd need 10 billion suns to fill its volume. For comparison, the average beach contains only about 5 billion grains of sand. Boom! It was an epic space explosion that made scientists' hair stand on end when they discovered it in February 2020. Its size and power are enormous, even by cosmic standards. We set our destination to a group of galaxies in the Giraffe constellation. If our rockets could fly at the speed of light, as fast as it takes the light from the bulb in your lamp to reach your eye when you switch it on, zoom, instant, it'd take 2.6 billion years to get where this explosion occurred in space. 2.6 billion years. A lot's happened in that time here on Earth. That long ago, dinosaurs weren't even around yet. Primordial life was just leaving the ocean and heading on land. Well, we're traveling faster than the speed of light. And we reach our destination, ground zero, for a boom so big, it'd be like 600 million suns exploding simultaneously. And our sun is massive to begin with. It could fit one million Earths inside. In fact, 99.8% of the stuff that makes up our entire solar system is the Sun alone. The remaining 0.2% is all the planets, moons, asteroids, and other random cosmic bodies floating around our star. And here's the real kicker. This burst lasted 100 million years. That's from today's digital world with smartphones and self-driving cars, all the way back to dinosaur times. So what set off this space boom of epic proportions? A black hole, what else? This monster swallowed so much substance that it choked and shot out a bunch of plasma beams. They cut through space and formed a cosmic wasteland all around the site. It was thought to be the biggest explosion in the universe. But sooner or later, every record gets broken. We head to another galaxy cluster. This one, dubbed Ophiuchus. An explosion thundered in it five times more powerful than the one in the giraffe. It was so big, you could easily line 15 Milky Ways across its blast area. Mind you, our galaxy is over 100,000 light years across and home to 200 billion stars. Yeah, whoa is right. It was the largest space blast since the Big Bang that started it all. 13.8 billion years ago. So what was the source of this blast? To answer that, 
we'll need a simple analogy. Just like on Earth, space sort of has its own megacities. These New Yorks and Tokyos of the cosmos are massive. And that word doesn't even do it justice, but I tried. They're officially called superclusters of galaxies. At the center of the most mega-huge ones, you'll find a supermassive black hole. Now, scientists still don't know much about them, but the theory goes that they're essentially a whole bunch of stuff, or matter, that gets squeezed into a teeny tiny point that can't even be measured because it's infinitely small. Yeah, complicated stuff. Think of it this way. It'd be like taking the entire Earth and shrinking it down to the size of a grain of rice. That grain of rice would still weigh the same as the planet. All that stuff would just be really squished together. So more matter equals more gravity, meaning a black hole's pull is unescapably strong. Not even light can get past it, hence the whole black part of its name. Funny thing is, we can't even see them with our eyes. Black holes don't glow or reflect light. They just swallow it up like spaghetti. Ugh, makes me hungry just thinking about it. But back to epic space things that go boom. A supermassive black hole exploded in this Ophiuchus supercluster of galaxies. This monster stopped pulling in everything around it like black holes usually do. Quite the opposite. It started spewing stuff out. A colossal stream of plasma ripped through space almost at the speed of light and broke through a bubble 1.5 million light years across. Every thousandth of a second, it was like 20 billion megatons of TNT went off, and it continued doing that for 240 million years. But now, I draw your attention to the heavyweight of the Milky Way. It's the toughest guy in the galaxy, a supermassive black hole called Sagittarius A-star. The mass of this beast is 4 million times that of the Sun. And you'll like this, it's only 25,000 light years from our home planet. In space terms, this thing is pretty much like our neighbor two houses down the street. Wait, don't worry, no need to pack up and move. Our neighbor has given up his old business of shooting hot jets into space. But in 2019, he did make astronomers' hearts skip a beat. Near this Sagittarius A star, they noticed a flash that was 75 times higher than normal. Their theories, one, the hole swallowed up part of a star that found itself wandering way too close for comfort, or two, a gas cloud crashed into it. After a 14 hour spike in activity, Sagittarius A star finally calmed down. Phew, but in the past, this giant was quick-tempered and knew how to light space up. 3.5 million years ago, our very ancient ancestors, as in they weren't technically human yet, were already walking across Africa, innocently unaware of a cataclysm happening far off in the sky above them. It looked like a beacon that suddenly turned on and shot out two cone-shaped beams. The whole thing was triggered by a hydrogen cloud 100,000 times more massive than the sun. It came too close, and Sagittarius A star reacted. Those jets of plasma cut through space for 200,000 light years. They didn't stop for another 300,000 years. That's the snap of a finger on the cosmic scale. But astronomers still find traces of that boom even today. Neutron stars also know how to set off some fierce fireworks. They appear after giant stars run out of fuel and collapse in on themselves. Imagine the entire sun getting squished down into the size of a small city. Yep, that makes neutron stars incredibly dense and heavy. One teaspoon of their matter weighs around 10 million tons. They spin extremely fast, hundreds of full rotations a second, and for some of them, they shoot out energy beams from the poles, making it look like a cosmic lighthouse. One of the most interesting neutron stars is in the constellation Sagittarius. Like black holes, it has powerful gravity and pulls in tons of matter. This all collects in a massive rotating disk. This particular one was powered by hydrogen from a nearby star. It gulped up its neighbor, taking in so much matter that it started heating up. The result? 
a gigantic fireball launched from its surface. Astronomers witnessed this on August 20th, 2019. They saw a 20-second flash that lit up space. It was the brightest burst NASA has ever seen. The star spent more energy on it than the sun produces in over a week. But of course, nothing beats the biggest boom of them all, the one that brought life to our entire universe, according to the most popular theory. But first, a little backstory. Scientists say only 5% of the universe is stars, planets, asteroids, comets, dust clouds, you, me, your chinchilla, all life, basically all the stuff you can see with your own eyes. So what can the remaining 95% be? The mysterious and dubious sounding dark energy and dark matter. In simple terms, they're like the yin and yang of space. Dark matter makes things attract to each other with gravity. It's the glue of our universe keeping everything together. Dark energy does the opposite. It makes things repel and grow further apart. So the theory goes. And weirdly enough, dark energy makes things grow further apart the farther they are from each other. Scientists can even see this for themselves. The more distant a galaxy is, the more quickly it's moving away from Earth. But those two forces weren't always around. In fact, about 13.8 billion years ago, there wasn't anything around. Everything was condensed into a teeny tiny dot that's infinitely small. Sound familiar? Yep, this mysterious forever shrinking point is also in the center of black holes, and it's called a singularity. It's where all our fancy science and math breaks down. It's the most puzzling thing out there. But one day, that incredibly dense and hot point started to expand in all directions, and it grew faster than the speed of light, doubling its size a hundred times within a fraction of a second. If you want the specifics, it was a hundredth of a billionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second. Yeah. The more time passed, the faster and bigger it grew. And it's been expanding since, like blowing up a balloon that never pops. Scientists called this expansion the Big Bang. 